Welcome back to Season 2 of the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share with you what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. Make sure you never miss an episode and download the Discount Property Investor app in Google Play or iTunes today. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back. Mike, how are you today? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Got my workout on this morning. Good for you, I man. Feel better when I get to the gym before I start the day. Yeah, yesterday. I was trying to do that today, too, but... I yeah. had a couple of appointments this morning, so I couldn't make it work. Yesterday, I didn't make it, and it's just, uh, yeah, it just sets the tone for the day. It's totally different for me. Like, right now, I'm just I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. Got my phone on, Good you know? Good you, man. That's yeah. awesome. Let's do this thing. So, anyway, What are we talking about today, Mike? Let's talk uh, about something new. Today, I think we wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of making offers. I love and, that. Uh, it's not not new for us. I think, I hope we've uh, we pound this into you guys, our... our uh, you know, following here. If if uh, we don't, then we apologize for not uh, not doing a better job. Uh, just emphasizing uh, how important it is when you're trying to wholesale to make an offer. So let's talk a little bit about uh, just quick overview wholesaling. Obviously, Dave, we're buying a property uh, at a great price, selling it for a good price. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people like to do an assignment, and and uh, one thing that we like to emphasize is full disclosure. Like, be very very candid uh, with your buyer. Uh, with your seller, with when you're marketing the property, um, and Dave, you had you mentioned earlier that you had a really good appointment this morning, and it was uh, we were just kind of briefly talking about the importance of candor, and uh, candor meaning like truth telling, just being full, fully honest, full disclosure with the seller. Right. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about? Yeah. It? So I had an appointment this morning with uh, with with a seller. It was in a not so great part of town, and she had. Uh, had a fire in the house. So I knew going into the appointment that it wasn't going to be a great deal for us. However, I like going on appointments and I like, excuse me, meeting new people and just looking at properties. So I agreed to meet her over there and I walked through it and the house needs everything. And on the street, there's boarded up houses. Behind her house, there's burnt, burnt up, boarded up houses. It was just a really part of town that nobody wanted to be. So it wasn't very desirable. And um, I told her before I even walked in the house that I buy properties to rehab and I buy properties to lease out. And I didn't have any interest in buying this house before I even walked inside because of the neighborhood and the street that it was on. So I set the precedent with her right away that I'm not going to be the buyer. So I don't want to make you think that I am. Okay. Because if you do and you're trying to wholesale it, you're going to get in trouble later whenever that particular seller expects you to show up to the table with money um, and you don't have the intention of ever doing that because I don't want to own on that street. So set the precedent really early that you know I didn't want it. However, I came in right behind that with how, you know, I know a ton of investors though. And instead of you wasting your time calling 50 people, I could essentially send out one text or one email and maybe, again, didn't promise anything, but suggested that it's possible that I know somebody or somebody in one of my networks that may want that property for a couple grand. And, uh, but that's it. I mean, it needed, it needs everything. It needed a water heater. It needed an HVAC. It needed a new panel box because they had cut the wires. They had pulled out all, all the copper. Um, They had stole the kitchen cabinets in the back of the house needed brickwork. It was all boarded up. I mean, it needed everything. Uh, I would imagine that place needs 40 to 50 grand. And the ARV of it is probably 40 grand. So it's just, it's not a great deal, but you never know. Like even when I first started, I bought a house um, off the MLS and rehabbed it myself. So I saved a lot of cost and it ended up being what it was worth when I was done. And I don't look at that experience as being a negative experience because in the process, I was learning how to do all these different types of trades. I was learning the cost. Um, so on and so forth. So that's why I don't suggest walking away from that because there may be somebody out there that wants that particular deal. But I made it very clear to her that I didn't want the deal. It wasn't for me. So what I did is I kind of spun it and I said, hey, 
I can maybe help you sell it. You know, if I were to give you like two grand for it, um, and I could maybe try to get someone out here interested between, you know, three and five, um, would that help you? I mean, really, how bad do you want to sell it? And she's like, I owe one year of taxes at like 700 bucks. And I'm not going to fix it. I can't afford to fix it. So I want to sell it. So it was just kind of a good win-win, even though I didn't make any promises. So I signed an agreement with her. I should have used an option contract. However, I didn't have any in my car. I need to load my car back up. But I had a contract to purchase. So I basically gave myself 30 business days, which is about two months, um, inspection period. And I put the close for the end of next month. Um, and we're in the beginning of this month. So I bought myself two months on that. And I told her straight up, she signed the agreement right there. I didn't, I told her that I wasn't planning on, um, open an escrow until I found a buyer, even though I had a contract. And I didn't even sign my side of it. Um, cause again, I'll open escrow when I need to. But this allows me to at least, uh, send, send it out to my list of investors and try to jump some interest. And if I can help this lady, that'd be great. I mean, this house was worth about 50 grand before there was a fire and she abandoned it and then people broke it and stole everything um, and it caught fire and they didn't have insurance. So this lady's out like 50 grand. Jeez. Terrible, you know? Yeah. So I'm just kind of like, hey, maybe I can help you. However, I'm not the buyer. I'm going to try to bring buyers in and you may never hear from me again. So I'll try to call you in a week or two if I have any interest and if I need to renegotiate with you, We'll cross that bridge whenever we get there. So this is a really does overly transparent. Yeah, really interesting kind of thing because it's not. I mean, Dave mentioned it was a, a lower uh, income. I mean, it's a fifty thousand dollar property, so it's at not. Best. Yeah, at best. So it's not a high dollar property. There's not a ton of demand, but there is, in my opinion, a market for those properties. You've, you've got, got to buy this. You've got a lot of want to be landlords, and not again, not trying to. Screw anybody else. Oh, no, everybody starts of, somewhere. So there's, exactly. maybe they're not experienced enough to know where to get the best properties, but that property may work for them. Well, it'll work for them because they're doing things differently, too. So we so we say, you know, it's going to cost us forty grand to get it rehabbed. Well, if somebody's going in and doing all the work themselves, they're going to do it for a third of that or half that. And, again, maybe they're not. Maybe they're cutting corners. Maybe they're not. I don't know what their business model is. But if somebody goes in, maybe he's in the trades, and he can do everything. Um, to code and get permits and all that for, for 10 grand. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he just is paying for materials. He does it all on the side. So again, to him, that's a $50,000 property when he's done. He's willing to put in 15,000 sweat equity. He'll pay you 10 grand for that house. You know, I mean, it's, it's not a dead mm -hmm. deal just because it is in a rough area. We, my, I personally, I mean, that's kind of where I started. Uh, it's easier to start in the lower income areas in my opinion. There's less competition. There are less, um, I don't know how to say this nicely. I guess the sellers are less savvy as well about all their options, uh, and they don't always they, they wouldn't necessarily have the money to repair the house themselves. So kind of like this lady's situation. David mentioned he felt bad for her. She doesn't have the means to fix it up. She couldn't even go to a bank, most likely. I don't know where I didn't meet her. But most likely she couldn't go to a bank, get a loan to rehab the house, and then try to sell it. Like that's not even an option for her. Whereas somebody who has a $200,000, $300,000 house, First off, they probably had it insured, and second, they might be able to get a loan against the property to fix it up and actually pull some of their equity out of it. Right. So again, it's it's a good place to start. Uh, there are a little bit tougher sales, but that's the importance of being truthful with the owners. Absolutely, it was very clear. So, it was like I don't want to own here, but I'm I'm happy to help you try to. But the takeaway here is that I didn't leave there with an item on my list to do of like, oh, I need to send this lady a contract. I had one in my car. I made it very clear that I didn't really want to buy the home. However, I could maybe help her. And I brought a contract back. Yeah, I love that. Man. You and know, that's, that's the point. You have to you have to execute right there and get those properties under contract. So, you know, if I did this 10 times, the odds of me being able to sell this property that I don't even want to buy, maybe one or two out of 10. So you have to send contracts, a lot of them. Uh, for a while there, and Mike, you still do make offers on listed properties. Yeah, all the time. It's all tough. the time. So what's the, I mean, let's talk about some of the numbers. So we're buying properties on the MLS as well as tons of off-market deals as well for the wholesaling business, but also for our rental acquisition business. And, you know, when you're making offers on, on properties that are listed, you got to get them at like 70 to 75 cents in the dollar because our lenders are going to lend us 75 to 80 cents in the dollar and we have to fix them up. So that's best case scenario. Usually mm -hmm. it's 50 cents in the dollar. So you're making, what, hundreds of offers probably to get 
two or three of them accepted. Yeah, it's a lot. It's uh, It can be frustrating at times, uh, especially because uh, you feel like you're making a lot of enemies. Because agents take it personally when you make low offers. They get offended by it a yeah. lot of times. And I personally, I, I guess I get it. Um, but if somebody was offended by my offer this morning, and I spun it so hard on them, it was kind of funny. Um, I said, what would you buy this house from me for if I owned it? And they didn't have any money, and they were trying to sell it. And I said, well, there you go. That's, that's exactly my point. <laughs> like, I don't care what it was worth at one time. What could I sell it for? Well, I'm not going to pay more than that. I'm in business to make money, not to be a charity. And I wasn't being rude or mean at all, but I have to sometimes just to be kind of blunt. Yeah, with absolutely. that, and be like, well, what would you buy it off me for? Well, if you're not going to give me five grand for it. Why on earth would I give you ten or twenty or fifty for it? You know, yeah, just exactly. Kind of have to put it in terms that make sense. So, yeah. And I'm not spins the wrong word, but just change the perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a better way to describe that. Yeah, so we're talking about uh, making offers on the MLS. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, hey, let's hear it. I, again, I'm curious to know more about it. I don't even know. Yeah, so we, well, and we did a lot of stuff with the MLS. Dave. You know all about Oh, yeah, our, we've done it in the past a lot. bulk offers thing. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm getting into now and I'm finding a little bit more success with is, is actually going through and doing the work of buying the auction properties. So there's a lot of properties on the MLS, and there's a lot of competition right now. So... When a property is listed at a little bit less, I'm, I'm frequently getting told, that, you know, oh, we're getting multiple offers. Oh, send me your highest and best. And I sometimes I believe the agent, sometimes I don't. I find it hard to believe when property's been listed for 120 days and then all of a sudden my offer goes in and so do three others. But it does. It's happening. I mean, there are a lot of people buying properties right now. So... The doing the work is what I mean and going to like the Zoom auctions and the auction.com is you're finding less people are able to go through all those steps, especially, or not necessarily able, but willing to. Uh, it's a different playing field. It's a little bit more work. You have to monitor the auction. Uh, you have to pay these ex exorbitant fees to the auction companies. It's usually about three to five grand on top of uh, the purchase price. You have to factor all that stuff in. Uh, you have to, again, you have to be built in ahead of time. You've got to go out and look at the property. There's no inspection period. Mm -hmm. There's no, uh, but again, that's what I'm finding is the is the, uh, the best way for me to acquire deals for our rental side. And we uh, probably be able to sell most of them if we wanted to. I mean, not, it wouldn't be a true wholesale, but we would probably be able to sell them if we wanted to once we were, were the owners. Mm -hmm. uh, just because that auction just kind of eliminates a little bit of the competition. Um, and then making offers to agents, so I put everything on our special sales contract. So here, uh, we're I'm a licensed realtor, so I use the board certified forms. And when you're doing that, it, or when you are licensed, uh, you have to kind of disclose that you have an interest in the property. You have to disclose your licensed agent. There's all sorts of things you have to do differently than when you're just uh, when you're not an agent, when you're not a licensed person, uh, just going out and buying a house. Right. So again, there's a lot of different things you have to do. Um, and a, a lot of it is really just, in my opinion, at this point, CYA. It's cover your cover your butt. You know, mm -hmm. you can't. Uh, so, so even in our off-market contracts that we send now, Dave, we added in uh, some of the stuff from the other contracts because it's that important um, in terms mm -hmm. of getting sued. So we make tons and tons of offers. We've got the coolest thing I think, which is our offers contract built into our little CRM. We talked about CRMs last time, but even in our our simple contract, we included the fact that we are licensed agents in that because we, we want to disclose that to people. We want to make it very clear, hey, we're not trying to get an upper hand on anybody. I'm an agent. I can pull comps. And, and again, we're just very, very truthful with, with all that. Mm -hmm. So, Love it, man. But you got to make offers. That's the, that's the point here today, guys. You have to make offers. Um, the other day, somebody was in one of the big, huge, massive, like, uh, wholesaling Facebook groups. I think it was the Wholesaling Houses Full Time. And they were posting about um, making an offer on an MLS listed property. And every single person in there was saying, quit wasting your time. You know, you, you're not going to be able to get it. And some people were like suggesting offer amounts. And people were arguing about it. And I made a comment to this guy. And I said, I. I go, I, I buy houses off the MLS all the time, but you can't expect to get a great deal that you can wholesale on the MLS often. So if you're willing to pay a little bit more than a wholesale price, you can get them.
However, the numbers are still very few and far between. Meaning you're going to need to make 30 to 50 offers to even have somebody consider it. And there's so much time wasted on overanalyzing it. Just make an offer for what you'd be willing to pay and move on. Period. And I was like, don't respond to it. And I tag like six people above me. And I go, don't even respond to these people or me. It's a waste of time. Just make the offer and move on. And like every single person on the thing was like, great advice. But that's the point. Like quit talking about it. Just do something. Make a move. Make the offer and move on. It's an 88% chance that they're not even going to respond to you. <laughs> but if you don't make the offer, uh, that's funny. Yeah. But then how would how would they ever know to respond to you, right? And in time, a lot of times, just like this offer right here, I got this this property this morning under contract for two grand, and I'm going to try to push it out for five or six, and maybe make twelve to fifteen hundred bucks, and maybe have two hours of time in it, right? So it's not a huge time suck. It's not a huge profit center either. But if I can do a hundred of these, that's a quarter million dollars. Well, and if, and the thing is, if you don't do it, you're losing out on that potential profit. So, say, how many appointments do you do you on a week? Say three, three two or three, three days. Three, yeah, two or three days. Let's say five to eight. All right, like that. Let's, let's say it's for simple math. Let's say it's uh, ten appointments a week. Mm -hmm. All right. So, say you get you do this on every appointment. So you get one of these little a properties week. blocked up a week. Thousand mm -hmm. dollars a week. That's fifty grand a year. Yep. And that's a ton of money, guys. Right. And that's again, it's just for going that extra mile. Taking the time to yeah, and this lady won't be calling me every day or week asking when we're closing because I set the precedent with her and the expect expectations is a better word. I set the expectations with her that I don't want it. However, I'm not gonna leave there and not try to help. I'm gonna try to help at a minimum. So if I can't get any anything drummed up for you know four to six grand on this in the next two weeks, I may just pass it to a realtor friend and see if they're interested in listing it for. Her. Again, if I can make a commission or a kickback or a marketing fee or a JV fee, whatever that might be on the deal, why wouldn't I? Yeah, so let's talk, so we're going to walk away from deals, essentially. Let's talk point. real quick then on what what are we doing? We're not, we are, why we're not, why it's okay to do what we're doing. Sure. So Dave, again, he said it, he said it, you have to make the offer, you have to get the contract. So we got the contract signed. He has an interest in that property. So he has an equitable interest in the property. And I would have used an option contract, an option agreement. If mm -hmm. I had one on, that would have been a better play because then I'd have zero obligation. Mm -hmm. But in this scenario here, if I don't open escrow anyway, it'll it'll expire on its own. So right. it's not a big deal. But go ahead, Mike. Right. My, my main point is um, just that you have to have that equitable interest to then uh, market this contract slash property for sale. So that's Correct. why Dave's not acting as a real guy. And I told her that she could do exactly what I was about to do, but it wouldn't be as easy for her. I'm like, I go, do you want to call 50 people over here and have 49 of them tell you before they even walk in the house that they don't want it? Or do you want me to send an email out to thousands of people on my list and just try to get two or three people that have interest in well, it and thing, want to walk through it? The thing is, Dave, she's probably owned this for... 10 years. Yeah. She's probably been like that. Yeah, I didn't look. Life, you know? Oh, she said it was like that for 10, 10 to 12 months. Yeah. So Maybe it's been like that for a year. Three though. years, probably. Right. So she's probably already <laughs> had 20 people come out. Yeah, you know? I have, exactly. I mean, and then you're maybe the first one who said, I'm right. going to help you. I'll, I'll have to try to help. Yeah, another way that so. we could have, I could have ran this was just to do a joint venture with this lady. I mean, that's essentially what I'm doing. But I, I needed to get equitable interest while I was there. And the only agreement I had was a purchase and sale. So I just made it. Uh, work for her and I. Uh, so it was good. Yeah, it was definitely a win-win for What's for the us. lowest uh, lowest offer you've made compared to their asking price this week? Uh, there was a guy asking 120 and I offered him 70 this week. So, I mean, that wasn't, yeah. uh, wasn't crazy, but that was also a higher cost house. I mean, there was one I went on last week. They're asking twelve grand. I offered three hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. And it's like I, I don't want it. Yeah. I mean, some properties you really just and really want. like I wouldn't have even bought that one because they owe two or three grand taxes, and I, that's what it would sell for. And I mean, it needs to be torn down, right? Yeah. But so this week I made an offer on a property that's been listed for one hundred and eighty days or so, so six months. It's listed at two hundred and ten thousand right now. I think it's somewhere around two hundred. I offered fifty. <laughs> Good offer. It's a, Good offer, man. Well, and this is a it was, love it. Yeah, I mean, it was just a, it was a really <laughs> weird house. The guy paid eighty five for it in two thousand and eight. So it's not like it was really that crazy of an offer. 
I think he rehabbed it extensively, but he's in way over his head. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, again, I offered 50 on a 200. I, I'm not afraid to. I, you know, sometimes I feel bad about it, but it's like, hey, this is, this is the number that works for me. If you can make that work, I, I would love to buy the house. If not, then thank you for your time. Right. I mean, again, it's, it's not, yeah, you gotta have a little bit thicker skin because people get offended pretty easily. And Mike, listen to this. This is a funny story I'll share with everybody listening too. So last night, so, so right now, um, we don't have the, uh, the, we don't have a call center at this point. We got rid of it. So occasionally we'll point the, the phone after hours to different people. Last night I was monitoring the phones. Um, I'm laying in my bed at like maybe nine o'clock with my wife watching TV and the phone rings and I could tell immediately it was a motivated seller from AdWords or something along those lines. So I just answered it. And, um, this guy talked my ear off for nine minutes before I could even get a word in. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was funny. And, um, so then I just kind of started to just be firm and not rude, but, you know, say, sir, 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 you know, let's start with your name. You know, what's a good number to reach you back at? And what's the address? I mean, this guy was just talking and talking about this house. And I didn't even pull it up on Zillow or anything. I was just listening to this guy. And, and I said, sir, what would this house sell for in its current condition? And he's like, I don't know, maybe a hundred, a hundred and, uh, 120 ish. He's like, the neighbor's house sold for 160. And I go, but what would your house sell for? I'm not buying the neighbor's house. I'm buying your house. And he goes, I don't know. I think I can maybe get 120 for it. And I go, okay. And is that with you listing it with an agent and, you know, all that other stuff? And he's like, yeah, probably. I'm like, so you're going to basically clear 90 after all your commissions and time and holding costs and everything else. I go, my offer will basically be like 70, 75 grand. That's what I was telling you mm-hmm. about. 70, 75 grand, somewhere in that range, because I'm not trying to make your problem my problem. I'm an investor. It's how I feed my family. So I'm going to buy something. I'm not even going to gamble on it. I'm going to make sure that there's profit in it. However, I can be the solution to your problem if you need to sell quickly. Otherwise, I'm not the guy. And I just made it very, again, I'm going to be very transparent with people. Like, you know, I wouldn't take my offer if I were you either. But how bad do you need the offer? How bad do you need to get rid of this? You know, and um, and I was like, this is where I'm at. He's like, oh, you're crazy. And I go, okay, well, you know, that's fine. Thank you for calling. And I'm going to call you back in six months and see if you still own it. And if you've been trying to sell it that whole time, you're probably asking something unrealistic. It's kind of where I was going with that. So, um, you know, you got to make those offers, though. So that one I made, I made verbally. I didn't even look the property up. This morning I, I did look it up, and the estimate was 120 on it. And we barely, rarely ever pay over that, even though that's a terrible um, indicator of true value. It is a good thing to look at when you're buying on a discount because you should always be under that number, no matter how bad or wrong that number is. Wouldn't you agree, Mike? Uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part. Again, sometimes mm-hmm. Zillow is... Yeah, it's just sometimes they the can board. be close, right. But always, other times... Right, when something is not accurate, it doesn't mean that it's always not accurate. It, it's all over the place. Right. I mean, yeah, Zillow's good at what it is good at. Right. I'll put it out there. Give you an idea. <laughs> it's a ballpark for sure. But it's definitely not the I'm not gonna say that we never would pay more. Sometimes Zillow is great because it shows less, Dave. I mean, there are times when I'd be like, Oh yeah, we probably pay more than that. Right. I mean it's it's fewer and farther between. It's fewer and farther between yeah. for sure. So but that, that's the psychology of I think just people in general. Everyone thinks that their stuff is worth more than it actually is once they own it. Uh so it's just kinda kind of uh, human nature. All right. Yep, but make the offer, guys. That's the point. Make the offer. Yeah, make the offer and then follow up. I think we talked about that a lot last week as well, uh, the importance of having your CRM. Yeah, using the CRM, following up. Yeah, absolutely. Follow up on your offers. So make those offers. Make those offers low, but make them honest. Make them fair. Uh, be be honest with the people. Uh, build some rapport with them, and you're going to you're gonna eventually get some offers accepted. That's the name of the game, and that's how you make money in this business by having properties under. Contract. Yeah, I was talking about that. You got to have an inventory. Mm-hmm. You know, this is so we are in the marketing business as wholesalers. However, we can be investors at the same time. Um, but as a wholesaler, you have to have an in, you have to have something to sell people. Um, this is funny. I a lady contacted me yesterday about being new to wholesaling and wanted to know if I'd be on her buyers list. And I said sure. You know, if you can bring me a deal, I don't care who brings the deal, I'll buy it. It has to be a deal. So I, I spent a couple minutes talking to her and explaining to her, you know, how it, what we're looking for. This morning she sends me an email that says, "Hey, I found a property on the MLS. They're asking twenty-five. 
would you be interested in paying me a ten thousand dollar assignment fee and buying this house at thirty five? So I responded and I said, Well, first and foremost, as an investor, I don't pay retail. So if they're asking twenty five, I'm gonna have to be at half that number. I'm going to be around twelve grand. Okay. So as a wholesaler, because this lady was obviously new, but I didn't want to just be rude. I go, you did a great job. I saw the email. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, go, yeah. I go, you need to be uh, under retail, especially, you know, under what you're asking me to pay um, in terms of retail. And I gave her a link to our free wholesale course, and she checked it out and was like, oh, thank you so much. This explains it because she obviously didn't understand that as a wholesaler, Mike said, my first thing you said when we started this episode was, Buy great, sell good. And retail is above good. Retail is bad. Retail can be good. It's, it's not just necessarily. Not, yeah. I mean, it's essentially too high. We don't pay that. So if you're a wholesaler, you have to not only get below that number, but get below it even more to make your spread. So in that case, I told the lady I'd be interested in twelve grand, and she was asking thirty five. Mm-hmm. You can't wholesale on well, top. You and can. There's, and there's also it's happened in the past. I've done it. But it's rare. It's pretty rare. Super rare. And then, so there's also what we had mentioned before, you have to have the equitable interest in the property. So that woman... Yeah, and I told her she, that too. I said, yeah, go get it under contract before you bring it to she me. She doesn't know what she's doing, mm-hmm. and that's when she's doing something that's technically, I think it's illegal, or I don't well, know. Well, she wasn't publicly marketing it. She yeah. said it to me. I wasn't going to, like, report her or anything, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, I hinted, like, you shouldn't be doing... What you're doing. What you're doing, because you have no interest in this property, you know? So... Um, yeah, but again, hopefully we hopefully we make a great bird dog out of her, and hopefully we make somebody who can go out and wholesale. Yeah, how do you see that email? Is it on the I think you see it because it went to one of our, our uh, multiple lists. Okay, yeah. cool, yeah, interesting. Interesting. So make the offers, guys, no matter what. No matter if you're embarrassed, uh, let's talk about you know making offers blindly real quick. If you don't know, um, ask them what they're asking for the property and cut that number in half to start. That's what, That's a good rule of thumb for me. And they may hang up on you. They may laugh you out the door, but at least you're doing a strategy called anchoring. And you're basically saying, well, here's where I'm going to start. And it could be really, really low. And if you want to meet somebody in the middle and you anchor really low, that middle could end up being a really great number. Somebody's asking 100 and you ask for 50 and you end up meeting them at 75. That's way better than them, them starting at 100 and you saying, well, I can maybe do 80. Because then you yeah. can't get down to 75. So in this You're time, already above it. And it sounds a little crazy what he's saying, like offer half of what they are asking, but it's not. That's you're, not what I'm really willing to pay. Mike, you always say this. That's where the negotiation starts. 100%. Well, and I don't mean that Dave's offer is, I, I mean that it's crazy to like just think, oh, well, they, what if they were already selling it for kind of low? Well, you don't know that, though, until you run comps and really look at it. My point is, so if we take a $100,000 house here in St. Louis, um, and I'll just use 100000 for round numbers. If they think their house is worth a hundred thousand, because that's what the houses around it are selling for is a hundred thousand, but you know that they're calling an investor because that house needs some work, then it's probably not really worth a hundred thousand right now. It's probably worth a little bit less. So if they're asking a hundred thousand, and then you come back and you say, well, as an investor, you know, I'd probably be closer to around fifty thousand dollars. You know, that's what I would pay cash to take it off your hands. If they balk at that then you know that they're not motivated. If they say, oh, well, maybe you ought to come out and check out the house and see, uh, then you know that, well, there might be some motivation, and you know that the property probably needs a lot of work. So that's kind of where I was at with uh, with what Dave was saying. Now, again, if somebody has a, a decent property and they're already selling it at a discount, it may, uh, that may kind of blow up on you, but again... It's a uh, it's it's a great strategy, uh, and I like anchoring. I do really do. Think yeah, you got to start with anchoring, and here's why though: because a lot of people, a lot of newbies, myself included, when I first started, still I'm we do still it. learning yeah. the principle. So what is the principle? That there is so much cost that goes into selling something. Um, if you're wholesaling it, not so much, but if you're buying something and you're trying to sell it in retail, you have to pay an agent most of the time sell that property. So much money. 6%. It's crazy. Then you have to pay all the taxes on that year and then the insurance. So you have that. If you own it, you might have to have in- utilities on it. So the holding cost is going to be a ton. If you've been lent money to purchase it, you have interest. So those those costs are just, you know, always there. And then when if you sell it to a to a buyer that, you know, wants to get an inspection done, you're going to have to fix those items or settle with that individual. So that's called seller concessions. 
And that right there can be anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to several thousand dollars if they decide that they want a new roof or a foundation wall fixed or just anything in general. And that doesn't come till the end usually. So you may think you have a good profit on a deal until you get the inspection and then they start renegotiating. So the cost is so high. So whenever I'm going out and I'm making um, offers to people, I'm including all that. I say, okay, well, you think it'll sell for 120, but does that include the seven or eight, nine thousand dollars worth of commissions that you're going to get? So yeah, let's talk about it selling for 120 in six months from now. How much are you going to net from that particular property? You got to take 20 to 30 grand right off the top for the holding costs and the commissions and the taxes and everything else. I mean, it adds up so fast. Plus, it might need work. So that offer isn't really that crazy. Okay. Um, one thing we haven't really touched on that much, Mike, we did a little bit earlier with me in this appointment this morning, this deal I got locked up, but we are really here to offer a solution to people. So we kind of, we need to circle back to that. Mm, We're not here to offer, cool. you know, make offers that are low so people think that we're here to steal their property. If you explain it properly, your low offer will be a reasonable offer if you explain it properly. Let me say that again. Any offer, no matter how low it is, if explained properly, properly will make um, that offer look realistic and come across that way if you can explain it properly. So if the offer is low, you need to be able to explain why it's low. Well, it might need work, and I'm going to need to sell it just like you, and it's going to have these holding costs and the seller commissions and the seller concessions and all that other type of stuff. But again, we are here to offer a solution to people. So most of the time when we're out, people aren't motivated enough to like those offers. But sometimes when we're out, people are so motivated that they may not even care why they're just happy that you are taking a problem off of their back. You're there to offer them a solution, and they know that you're going to do this and make a profit, and they should. That should be expected. A lot of times whenever I walk through a home and people say, what do you think? My response to them is, I think I can make a little bit of money on this if I can get the price right. And <laughs> just tell them straight up. I know I'm not interested in buying a property to rehab and lose money. I'm not interested in buying a rental that doesn't appraise for what I'm all into it for. I need to be at 70% of that, right? So again, you were there to solve a problem. And if you're struggling with this scenario to where you can't come across the motivated sellers or good motivated sellers or enough of them, the problem is not you, it's your marketing, okay? You're just not seeing enough people and having enough reach and enough audience to let everybody know that you are there to help them. You are not there to be a charity. You're not there to pay retail for their property, so that problem becomes yours. You're going to make a you're going to make a profit or get paid for taking on the problem. So therefore, you're there to solve a problem and give them a solution, which essentially is uh, a liquidation. I'm here to help you liquidate, and that's it. You know, if you pay more than that liquidation price as a wholesaler, you're never going to be able to get a spread because you've basically paid too much. Mm -hmm. So have the mindset that you're there to help. You're there to solve a problem, and oftentimes you'll meet people that don't have a big enough problem for you to help them solve yet. You know, a lot of people are calling us all the time, especially now that we have radio ads. Oh, I heard your ad. I've been thinking about selling. You know, I'm just kind of wanting to get an offer. Well, I don't even really like going on those appointments. I'll just say, what's the house worth? You know, and, and let them tell me. How much work does it need? Let them tell me, and I'll basically take, that, take the amount of work that it needs and double it and take that off the price and start there. <laughs> So if it's a hundred thousand dollar house that needs twenty, I'll say, well, maybe interested in sixty, maybe, because I'm going to need to put twenty back in it, and there's going to be holding costs and everything else, guys. You got to get in love. So there's so many easy ways to to increase the number of offers you're making without increasing the amount of work you're doing. So that's a big thing. People get paralysis analysis and spend three hours analyzing a deal, and they never even get the offer out because they can't decide where it's at. Just start low and go and keep it low. Yeah, well, and, it. it's and, so simple. And write the contract up and, and send, send it to them. Sign the contract. Get it in writing. Get something going. You've got to you've got to take action to make things happen. So this lady this morning that sent me this deal that she yeah, had marked up, I wasn't even mad. I, yeah. I started laughing when I saw the email, and I'm like, this lady doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> I go, but you know what? At least she has the courage to like even make this. Just stupid trying, up a move and a mistake. She's trying to make money. Because guess That's what? Great. Now she has a free course that we delivered to her because she sent the right email to the right person. 
So she's going to learn. If people are just sitting around reading books or wondering how they can get out there and do a deal, but they're not talking to anybody about doing deals, how are they ever going to do a deal? It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So, like, it's funny. If we were to give that lady one of our daily checklists, she would have checked off, like, eight things. Like, oh, yeah, make the offer. Exactly. Get talk to property, an agent. Talk to a buyer. Walk a property, maybe. Yeah. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So she's great. just doing something. And that's what I loved about it. So I wasn't even mad or upset. I was kind of giggling. And I was like, I'm going to help this lady out. Here's where I'm at. Here's where all investors are going to be. Here's where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And by the way, check this course out. So if you want to check it out as well, freewholesalecourse.com, we're going to teach you what it takes and how to wholesale. It's a great course. So, All right. All right, guys. Make the offer. That's the important thing today. Um, yeah. No matter what, make the offer. Uh, try to make them written, even if you do a verbal. Maybe send an email follow-up uh, or even a text. That was a big thing to the people. Yeah, you know? that's a big thing for me is when you're on an appointment to uh, I just the offer in writing. I love to have it. I love the – and that's one of our big things is having actually a seller credibility or a buyer credibility packet. So we go in with um, a, a folder most of the time with a contract, with some comps, with, uh, with all that stuff. So, yeah, having it in writing is great. But I always like to get their email as well because most people use email, and it's easy. If – they don't like the contract, and they say, oh, you know, whatever. I say, all right, well, let me email you a contract here. Or, hey, can I follow up with you uh, with the yeah, email? Yeah, so this lady wanted, didn't even want a copy of it, and I was like, all right, well, I'll just text you a picture of it. Yeah. She was like, that's cool. Because you want to leave it with them, for sure. You well, you need a copy of it, too, though. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Cool, cool, guys. All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap up for the day, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Sounds good, guys. Next time. We'll see you then. Let us know if you have any questions or anything. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, please visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy and you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.